Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Hunk Fan TV. Back at you another video about the content. It's video. Go ahead and smash that like button on the content channel. Go ahead and, get, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Excuse me. Um, so, I said last night we were going to do the Ravens versus Bucks uh, full game breakdown, recap, uh, standout performers, you know, how we usually do it at the, uh, every Ravens game. So, uh, last night we wanted to get that video up on the second half, but now we're going to talk about the entire game as a whole offense and defense, um, who stood out, things like that. All right. So, let's get to the standout performers first. Uh, I want to start with Broderick Washington. All right. Calais Campbell is out. Broderick Washington gets to play a lot of snaps because a huge bump in snaps. I have Broderick Washington down here for three deflected passes. Okay. And they, they were all important plays. All right. Um, the Ravens D line is full of guys who are huge and guys who need to get their hands up in the passing lanes. And Broderick Washington heard that message and got his hands up in the passing lanes multiple times. Disrupted this Buccaneers quick passing game. Well, I should say Tom Brady's quick passing game because he's done it everywhere he's been. Um, that's how you beat Tom Brady. You got to get home with four. You got to uh, get your hands up in that passing lane and uh, deflect some of these quick passes coming out. You know what I mean? That's what you got to do. And we're going to keep going with the D-line. I got two more D-linemen here. Uh, Justin Matabike is an absolute beast. This guy, um, I said it before in past videos, this past breakout, uh, Justin Matabike is a serious player. He's the real deal. All right? Um... And it's beautiful to see, man. It's beautiful to see that that draft class is starting to come together. We're starting to see those guys really take that next step and really become NFL players, become starting caliber players in this league. And doesn't matter, Big is right up there. He's one of those guys. All right. Last but not least, um, ageless wonder, Justin Houston, bro. Justin Houston is incredible. Um, he he's been off for a couple weeks. Maybe he's fresh. I don't know, but he hasn't missed a beat. Honestly, I think he had uh, might have had back to back sacks on Brady, um, just all kinds of pressure. Uh, don't get me wrong, some of these sacks were cover sacks because you know back end was locking up, but Justin Houston looks incredible. Uh, I just can't. Um, I don't know where this Ravens pass rush would be if Justin Houston um, wasn't here this last couple of weeks. He's he, he's been the driving force. Everything else is everybody else is feeding off of him. So Justin Houston has been the Ravens' best pass rusher by a mile. Don't keep me wrong, JPP has been good. Oway has had his moments. Uh, but Justin Houston is the lead dog in that room, bro. Lead dog. So shout out to Justin Houston. Honorable mention. Um, I want to mention Marlon Humphrey. I feel like we don't talk about him a lot. At least I don't talk about him a lot on this channel. Um, and that's just because he's such a good corner that it's almost come to be expected, right? Now, he did have that drop interception that that, that really can help the Ravens out on that one. We're going to literally the Buccaneers' first play of the game. But... Um, Besides that, he was solid. Yeah, Mike Evans caught a deep one on him. He's, he's Mike freaking Evans, bro. He's he's a he's a great receiver. All right, but besides that, he didn't give up much. And maybe if anything, one big play. Um, and Maul has been like this entire season. So I just want to give Maul Humphrey an honorable mention, bro. He's a shutdown corner. He's Maul and who we saw a couple years ago. He's back. Like, he's back. So shout out Maul Humphrey. Now, offense, I do have some guys, but this is this is second half only. First half was so nondescript, so uh, so dead. You know what I mean? So second half only, the entire offense gets the game ball, bro. The entire offense gets the game ball. But we're going to talk about it exactly Lamar Jackson and uh, Devin DuVernay, okay? Devin DuVernay finally got the ball in his hands, and when he gets the ball in his hands, it's electric. He turns that punt return, kick return mentality into offense. Where he's looking, he's looking for the gaps. He's looking for the way to go. This dude is hard to bring down. He's fast. He's quick. He's agile, and they're able to use him more. So that's Devin Duvernay's side. Lamar Jackson side. All right. So this is from PFF. Lamar Jackson in the second half. Eight for eight. Ninety-four passing yards. Forty-two rushing yards. Two touchdowns. A one fifty-five point two passer rating. Damn near a perfect passer rating in the second half. Lamar Jackson plays some MVP level football. Honestly, the 94 yards in the air test probably could have been more. He decided to keep a couple, you know, and they want to force it. So that's cool. Um, but the Lamar we saw in the second half was that was that was the MVP, yo. Smart decision making, decisive. And Lamar was throwing the ball with a lot of velocity last night. You know, people was talking about maybe he's hurt. I don't know. But he throwing the ball hard last night, right? Um, so Lamar Jackson. This offense in the second half, well was calling the plays. It all tied together, and it was beautiful. The execution was there with the actual scheme as well, though. They both tied in hand in hand. So we need to see more of that going forward, all right? So those are my stand-up performers. 
you know, Yabaji Washington, Matt, uh, both the Justins, Matt Abike and Houston. Um, all of them mentioned for Malo. Offense in the second half, but specifically Lamar Jackson and uh, Devin DuVernay, okay? So now let's get to this game recap, right? Let's talk about what we saw on offense, defense, um, quarters one through four. We're going to run through it, all right? So first quarter, uh, Team Drake starts with the starts the game. Now this is a little surprising, right? But it really should be when we think about it, okay? Gus Edwards is coming off a serious injury. And also it's a Thursday game. It's a quick turnaround. So it's not too surprising that King Drake started the game and got a lot of work early on, right? Lamar starts off kind of starts off good. Good pass to Mark Andrews. Uh back to back passes to Andrews after not being involved all last week. But you could tell Mark ain't right. He he doesn't look good. But anyway, that, that job ends up with the Ravens punting. The Buccaneers muffed the punt. Give the Ravens prime field position at the five yard line. And um you know, Prochet makes a catch. The Ravens saw it at the goal line. The problem with that was they, the Buccaneers muffed the punt like the five yard line. The Ravens don't attempt to run the ball. They might have actually don't. No. I think Lamar just tried to run the ball one time on a QB keeper off, off a little, like a little zone read and got stuffed in the backfield. But the point is, this is what was the complaint with Roman. When he does something the next week and say fans didn't like it or the team didn't like it, he tries to overcorrect the next week. So, like, say, example, right? We pass too much one week, we're gonna run the hell out the ball next week. Say, say we 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 uh we run the ball too much the week before, we're gonna pass the hell out the ball the, uh, the next week, right? It's no balance, there's no consistency, there's no mixing it up like we saw in the second half. This first half was typical, right? And people say, Oh, you guys were complaining for Roman to throw the ball. No, we were I'm well, me personally, I can't tell people everybody else. Me, I'm complaining for a balanced offense. An offense where I can't look at the formation and say, This is a run, this is a pass, right? I'm unpredictability, okay? That's, the, that's what we were calling for. Anyway, Ravens score uh, 3-0 Ravens, right? But like, like I said, unbalanced play call, heavy on the passing game to start. Um, next drive. So, Ravens still throwing a lot. Uh, Lamar extends the play on like a third down and four. Tries to find Proche, and it's a miss. I'm honestly. It is it. Lamar's rolling to his right. Proche's about 15 yards down the field. He just throws it a little bit too far to the right. All right? It's a miss. I'm not, I, I got to be honest with it. That's not to say Lamar played bad. He missed one throw, okay? He was he was really good last night, all right? Um, and then the first half, they kind of continued with the theme of passing the ball out of heavy formation. So we're talking about one wide receiver, three tight ends, and we're expecting Lamar Jackson to find a dot. So it goes hand-in-hand, hand, right? The the the, um, the the miscommunication in play, or sorry, not, not the miscommunication, but the up and down uneven play with bad personnel on the field. It goes hand-in-hand, hand, right? We can't have one without the other, and that's the main thing. When the Ravens have finally decided to open it up more, we saw a better passing game. All right, anyway, let's talk about the defense in that first quarter. Now, like I said, Humphrey drops the interception first play of the game, bro. First play of the game. It would have been huge. Might have been first or second. They might have ran the ball first play, but second play of the game. Whatever. For the working is first time dropping back, throwing the ball, Marlon Humphrey thought dropped the interception. Would have been huge. That was one of three last night. Marcus Peters gets one. Chuck Clark gets one. Ravens should have picked Tom Brady off three times. I believe that was three separate possessions. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. All right. Right after that, you had a big completion to Godwin. Marcus Peters misses a tackle. Um, but something I did know is Devon Kennard was playing a lot earlier. Josh Bonds didn't play last night. So we thought it would be more Christian Welch, but it ended up being a lot of Kennard and um, A.J. Klein next to uh, Patrick Queen. So that was interesting. So, uh, But, you know, Harbaugh loves Welch on special teams, so that's probably the reason why for that happened. Anyway. Uh, Marcus Peters gets another penalty. His penalties are starting to add up a little bit. He's an aggressive corner, so it happens. But, you know, you would like to see him play a little bit better. Um, four net TD. Ravens uh, Ravens down now. Buccaneers is up 7-3. All right. Um, the next Buccaneers drive is more of the same. It's easy pitch and catch to Godwin. Bucks moving the ball at will. The Ravens are playing so far off. Tom Brady is getting the ball, hiking it, and throwing it out to the flat. They ran. They had to run wide receiver screens at least five times in a row, I swear. Three, maybe three, but it felt like five times in a row they just ran wide receiver screen, wide receiver screen. And the Ravens are playing so far off that they're allowing seven yards every time they catch the ball. But Sean Perriman got a catch in there. I mean, like, uh, and he turned it up and got some yards. Um, but the Ravens hold off in the red zone. So now it's Bucks 10, Ravens 3. Uh, Ravens get the ball back, and Lamar Jackson is sacked by Vita Bayer. And the offense is just kind of going in a little bit of a spiral. Um, they try to throw a screen pass to Duvernay that goes nowhere. It was a super long third down, I'm pretty sure, at that point. So, Ravens got a punt. You know, offense is out of sync, out of rhythm. 
Um, I think Lamar Jackson threw the ball 30 times in the first half. It's, you know what I mean? It was just nothing really working going on, all right? Um, but the Ravens do get the ball back. Uh, Gus Edwards makes a great run. He should have been blown up in the backfield. He turns it into about 15-plus yards. Gus Edwards was looking really good right there. Um, I got down here. Mark Andrews is not healthy. He caught a pass, went down, started limping, didn't end up being his shoulder. Um, he has multiple ailments going on. This break is going to be great for him to get back right because um, he's, he's he's not good. Him and Rashad Bateman are both not healthy at all at the moment. All right. Um, and um, Demarcus Robinson got involved. We saw a quick passing game. Lamar throwing it out, out routes, curl routes, little hitches. When it actually made sense to throw them on first and ten, second and ten, not you know third and ten. Now we're running three curl routes. Like that's that's what Greg Roman has to do sometimes, right? It actually made the passing, the short pass game actually made sense when they did it in this instance, right? So that was good to see, all right? Um, Forshay got a weird pass interference on the screen pass. To me, that's on the offensive line. That's on Lamar. And this is why. The screen pass is supposed to come out on a certain time. So guys down the field are blocking. The ball will come out on time. Now that's how you get a pass interference on the screen pass. He's doing his job. He's supposed to block. The ball got to come out a little faster. All right, anyway. Um... So Ravens at the Ravens had the point after that. Ravens get the ball back. They wanted some more up-tempo offense. I really like what they're doing. More Demarcus Robinson, uh, likely making plays, but he did catch a ball that was short of the first down. So Ravens got to go for it on this fourth down in the red zone. A lot of people are saying kick the kick it, take the three. Um, I was kind of on the fence, so I, I can't really give my opinion. I was almost on the fence about it. I, I really could have went either way. Ravens decided to go for it. They don't get it. Um, he tried to throw a. Semi kind of jump ball up to Demarcus Robinson in the end zone, and it just it didn't work out. Pass was deflected, um, drive over. You know, Ravens uh, stall out in the red zone once again. All right, Lamar demanded to go for it, and we didn't get it. You know, this is one of the few times where Lamar makes that demand, and we and we don't get it, bro. It's one of the few times that that happens. All right, uh, we know that he's super competitive and he wants to go for it, so there's no surprise there. All right. Um, but that defense in the second half, play, second quarter, played pretty good. This was just like the Browns game, bro. It was just a carbon copy of the Browns game, bro. The Ravens give up 10 points to start off early, and then the defense locks up after that. Geno Stone has a big hit to force an incompletion. Marlon Humphrey makes a big pass down the field on Mike Evans. Um, Roger Washington hands it, hands it a passing lane. Uh, but it was weird on the, on the Bucks had that two-minute drive. Mike Evans caught a pass of triple coverage where, like, nobody got their hands up, nobody got their head around. That was strange. But then Justin Houston, back-to-back -back sacks, bro. Back-to-back -back sacks, Justin Houston. Killed the drive pretty much right there. Um, and that was that was the end of, that was the, end of the half. Ravens uh, losing 10-3, to right? Uh, and I got down here. Defense played a great second quarter. But Bateman, Andrews, Marlin, Ronnie Stanley, Gus were all either injured or limited. Bateman and Andrews ended up being ruled out for the game. Marlo came back, Ronnie came back, and Gus um, ended up getting hurt uh, in the third quarter, unfortunately. But second half, the second half is about the offense, man. Um, great run by Lamar Jackson to start off. Uh, great run by Gus Edwards. We're mixing it up. Good screen to DuVernay, followed by an RPO to DuVernay. I mean, it was just back-to-back -back plays. DuVernay just making plays all over the field. Uh, then you got the play-action rollout touchdown to King Drake. That that drive to start the second half was beautiful. It was perfection. Um, it was unpredictability at its finest. It was this Ravens offense keeping the Buccaneers on their heels. Whatever was said in that in that halftime in that locker room, it proves that there is leadership on this team for one. And also the play calling. It proves that Greg Roman can call a different game and he chooses not to. And that might be a fireball defense in itself. I'm not I don't know, but we're gonna be positive right now. He called the game differently. It's no way that you can look at the game and say he didn't call it differently. He did. He called it differently. All right. Um, so anyway, tie game, 10-10. Uh, so the, when the Ravens get the ball back, another Duvernay jet sweep. Uh, the Ravens are starting to run the ball out of 11 personnel, which means they can spray the defense out, keep these wide receivers on the field, make you think it's pass when they're really going to run the ball. You know, that, that worked to perfection. Isaiah likely show. Isaiah likely is catching everything, making guys miss, making defenders miss. Uh, Greg Roman. Beautiful quarter so far. That's what I got down here. The Marcus Robinson gets loose on the screen. I think that screen might have been like a third and eight. He makes multiple guys miss. Gets the first down. Uh, the Ravens are rolling. Like, the Ravens are rolling, okay? And then Lamar Jackson does a Lamar Jackson play. Puts on the cape. Extends the play. Uh, he's looking in the middle of the field. Proche not open because the linebacker's covering it. Safety's coming down. He, he rolls out. Extends the play. 
sees Isaiah likely in the back of the end zone. Isaiah likely, perfect, beautiful catch, toe tap. It don't get it don't get better than that, bro. It don't get better than that. All right, seventeen ten. Uh, Ravens. I got down here. This team is unrecognizable in the second half. This this uh, offense at least is unrecognizable in the second half. Like I don't know who this team is that's playing right now. All right. And defense, I don't have me no spin third quarter. They didn't have to do much. Uh, Marlo, but Marlo was back out there, so that's great. Ravens had a three and out to start the half because the Buccaneers got the ball start the half. The Ravens need to tackle better. I got that. Uh, good stop on the jet sweep by by um, on Julio ran the jet sweep. AJ Klein stopped him. Ravens lock up this Buccaneers office again in the third quarter, and that's what I got for the defense in the third quarter. They didn't have to do much, bro. They they locked up. They did their thing. Uh, fourth quarter, as far as the offense go. Big Gus run. And we got to talk about Tyler Linderbaum. Tyler Linderbaum played an amazing game. He put Devin White in shackles the entire game. Devin White is a, is a smaller linebacker. He's a fast linebacker, fast as hell. But Linderbaum put that Iowa strength on him and drove him back. Drove him back. Put him on put him on his backside multiple times. Had was blocking Devin White 15 yards down the field multiple times. Tyler Linderbaum was a hell of a first-round pick, okay? We, I know Hollywood is a miss. We can say that, but they got Linda Baum. It was a great pick. It was a great pick. All right. Um, Gus Edwards is injured on that play, though, so we'll see what happens with Gus. Um, but anyway, fake speed option pass to Isaiah Likely. I got down there. Who was calling these plays? Another RPO to Duvernay. Uh, oh, then the, the funniest play of the game is Lamar Jackson was so mad at Patrick Ricard <laughs> for holding. I mean, Lamar Jackson is free and clear around the corner. Once Lamar hits the corner, he don't need to touch anybody. He's going to get around him. I haven't seen Lamar Jackson that angry almost ever. I can't really imagine a member of time where Lamar Jackson was that upset, that angry at somebody. He was giving Patrick Ricard the business, bro. But anyway, um, Ravens still end up scoring on this drive. Um, since the penalty was downfield, the holding penalty only made it like for second and 10, you know what I mean? So they, so they didn't make it for like second and 20 or first and 20. Um, so it wasn't that bad. Uh, but Ravens score again, Jet, uh, Devin DuVernay, Jet sweep, get the ball in his hands, he's going to do what he do. He's going to do what he do. Ravens 24, Buccaneers 13. Um, this is the best second half since, sorry, this is the best offense since the Miami game. That's what I got down here. The Ravens got to finish now. Um, so with the defense, Roger Washington, more hands his pass lanes again. Big play to Mike Evans or Marlo. Marlon Humphrey was kind of weirdly inside, of outside leverage. And Mike Evans just kind of made a play sweep underneath him, caught the ball. Um, Marcus Peters dropped dropped an interception, hit him right in the chest, and this is Marcus Peters. He's he's you know according to the broadcast, well, you know I believe it to be true, he's the active leader in interceptions um, for this. Uh, sorry, he's the active leader in interceptions for, uh, for players in the NFL. So out of everybody in the NFL, out of that the active players, Marcus Peters has the most interceptions. Sorry, can't get that out. But he dropped it, hit him right in the chest, dropped it. Okay. Um, Bucks still in the red zone again, no Ravens. Uh, Ravens holding to a field goal. Still got to finish. Um, There's a big defensive pass in the front of Brandon Stevens. Brandon Stevens didn't really cover himself in grace too much uh, this last game. I think it was a I think it was a rough call though because the ball is severely underthrown. Brady's short arms are like hell. Brandon Stevens even gets his head around. The problem is he pushes Scotty Miller in the in the in the, in the face mask, so that's why they call it. Um, and then. Another dropped interception. Chuck Clark. <laughs> Chuck Clark almost looked like he refused to catch the ball. He like batted the ball in the air instead of just catching it. It was it was a very, very strange way to drop a pass. Um maybe it came on him fast and he didn't see it. So I camera cut out. So um Chuck Clark drops the interception right there, right? And um now it's fourth and goal for uh, for Tampa. They get a false start, they gotta move back. So now they just keep the three, 24-16. Uh, two minutes left. Sorry, four minutes left. The Ravens got to finish this game off. They start running the ball perfect. They get down the field. Um, after Devin Lewis sets him up with a good kick return, so you can't, can't forget to mention that. Um, so Ravens 27, Bucks 16. So now it's just about playing the clock, holding it back, nothing easy down the field. Uh, Broderick Washington, another tip pass. Justin Matter, BK sack. He got a he got a BS rough in the passer call, but he got that because it was Tom Brady, whatever. Uh, Julio Jones, TD, fine. They, they made, the Ravens made them use the clock. They played it perfectly. Buccaneers go for two. They don't get it. Um, Ravens 20, 27, Buccaneers 22. Isaiah Lackney recovers the fumble. And that's GG, bro. That's game over. Um, Ravens played a really good second half offensively. The second half is the first time where the offense and the defense played well as the collective in a long time. Um, 
we see that what the potential what this team could be. Something that we got to talk about is that they called this game in the second half offensively like they didn't have Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman on the field. And I mean that in the most positive way. They did not try to force feed these guys the ball. They spread it around. Mark Andrews is a top tight end in this league. But he should be treated as part of the offense, not the entire offense, okay? And now, don't get me wrong. He should still get, you know, his targets, his seven, eight targets a game. But let's let it come in the flow of the game where we don't have to force the ball, right? And this is for Lamar Jackson, too. Lamar Jackson didn't stare it down the middle of the field looking at Mark Andrews. He was looking around, passing around, spreading the ball around, all right? Now, likely got, definitely got his touches, so that's obviously another tight end. Uh, but he just felt like more guys got involved. And that's the main thing, all right? Um, so that's this Ravens versus Buccaneers recap. Offense played really, really well second half. The defense, once again, like the Browns team, after giving them that first initial 10 points, was pretty much locked down the entire second half, bro. And I love what I saw from the defense. The defense is really coming into their own. We can have our complaints and our worries about them, sure. They need to tackle a little bit better, absolutely. But this defense is good, and they're finally playing up to that potential, that price tag that's on this defense. There's a lot of expensive players over there on that side of the ball. Uh, shout out to Kyle Hamilton, too, made a couple good plays. Give the rookie more chances to play, all right? Um, offensively, keep calling the game like that. Keep doing it. Don't stop. And, um, yeah, man, that, that's that Raven versus Bucks recap. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. I know this one ran a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but, you know, hope you guys still stay and watch the whole thing, all right? It's your boy, Gabriel. Uh, just another fan TV. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'm out.